Welcome to the Flower Girl with Chicken Gummy Demi and welcome back to a maybe not after talk. Um, the reason why there is not an official after talk is because last weekend there was no F1 race, there was no MotoGP race. Um, basically, I'm going to be explaining all of it. The race had been cancelled the entire weekend, had been cancelled um, exactly a week ago when this video is uploaded. Uh, because of bad weather there was a bad floodage a uh, bad flood in uh, Emilia Romagna which is where the circuit of Imola uh, lies and basically it was not they did not think it was the right choice to continue racing while the um, yeah what well, were well, the uh, the the emergency services are needed elsewhere so that's why they did not race and I have done some research basically looked up a website on six times F1 races were cancelled um, after Imola called of well, extreme flooding so I'm gonna be reading the entire news article to you guys so <laughs> be prepared Cancelled races have become an increasing, uh, increasingly rare occurrence in the modern day of F1. But the postponed Emilia Romagna Gr uh, Grand Prix has shown it can happen in a variety of reasons. There will be no Formula 1 action this weekend after the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix was cancelled due to extreme flooding in the region. Northern Italy has been hit by heavy rainfall, which has left many enter areas completely underwater. The F1 track at Imola has so far avoided being submerged, but parts of it have fallen, uh, have fallen foul uh, for, of the water. <laughs> and the decision was made on Wednesday, I knew it, <laughs> May the 17th, to call off the Grand Prix due to safety fears and to allow emergency services to focus on their efforts on those impacted by the floods. So yeah. Um, where is the part where we're gonna be? Oh yeah, right here. The first one. The 1969 Belgian Grand Prix. A driver boycott led by Sir Jackie Stewart calls to cancellation of the Grand Prix. Jackie Stewart, who acted as Martel, uh, Martin Brundle's sidekick at the Miami Grand Prix earlier this month, relentlessly campaigned for, an, uh, for improved, improved safety standards in the sport back in the 60s and 70s. The three-time world champion took particular uh, issue with spa Champs, where he crashed badly in, in 1966. Stewart, soon to be 84, demanded changes to the track ahead of F1's return three years later. Upon learning that Belgian authorities had failed to act on his recommendations, he led a boycott of the drivers, which, le which left them with no decision but to cancel at short notice. Yes. The next one, I, I have heard of a boycott in Formula One once, uh, but I think that was like um, uh, like Africa, that region, not Belgium. So this is also learning from me, and my hair is a mess once again. Yay! You can tell my hair's a mess. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, let's keep it to that now, shall we? Let's not play with my hair again for the rest of this video. So this one is three years in a row. The 1983, 84 and 85 New York Grand Prix, which apparently never took place. New York has never hosted an F1 race despite coming close in the 80s. The 2023 F1 calendar features three US races with the Circuit of the Americas 
and the debuting Las Vegas street circuit to come. Yeah. Las Vegas. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So if, for example, George Russell crashes out of the race in a very embarrassing way, we can no, we can't talk about it because it stays in Vegas. Hey. <laughs> However, it doesn't look like a first a first race in New York will be happening anytime soon, with the idea rejected last year. A Grand Prix in the Big Apple looked to be a goer back in 1983 when it was announced to be held at either the Meadowlands Sports Complex in New, Ye in New Jersey or at Flushing Meadows in Queens, where the US Open is held. It was never realized due to a mix of environmental protests, legal threats and a lack of sponsors. It was put back a year and then another year and then another before the plans were scrapped altogether. Now we're gonna go come a bit more closer to this time. 2011 Bahrain Grand Prix. What was meant to be a busy Bahrain track remains empty in 2011. Bahrain was set to be the season opener in March 11, uh, 2011, but the Arab Spring, a series of anti-government protests across the Middle East and North Africa, put paid to that. The death of a number of civilians and the fear of the Grand Prix being targeted as a high-scale event meant it was postponed just three weeks before. It was initially pushed back to October, but many figures, including Mercedes team principal back then, Ross Braun, and Red Bull driver Mark Webber, spoke out against the reinstatement, and it was ultimately abandoned in June. Now we're gonna go. We're gonna go back three years from this point. So we're gonna go back to March, and then three years before that to the 2023 Australian Grand Prix. Remember, at that time, COVID just started. <laughs> so yeah, Australian fans were all set for the, for the 2020 Grand Prix before it was cancelled on the day. The drivers were actually already there and they never drove a single lap there. So that was sad. Despite the growing threat of the COVID-19 pandemic in March 2020, the Australian Grand Prix was giving the, th the green light to kick off the new season. Pressing on was controversial, to say the least, with Lewis Hamilton describing this decision as shocking and mem memorably declaring, Gash is king. That was legit uh, a quote from Drive to Survive, and they used it as a title for one of their episodes that year. Oh, Jesus. That was a good one. Ten hours before first practice on the Friday, a U-turn was performed, and the weekend was cancelled, with F1 only returning down under last year. The FIA pushed on as best, as, uh, as best they could in 2020, despite the ban pandemic, with the action getting back underway as early as July. Now we're going to go back even less. <laughs> we're going to go back two years now. 2021 Belgian Grand Prix. I mean, this, this one is just the race. I mean, the practice sessions and qualifying sessions, they were, they, they were driven. So, don't know why this is on. Oh, it's six times of one races were cancelled. Oh, okay, then it makes sense. A sudden spa wasn't able to be raced on two years ago. As often as the case as at Spa, torrential rain fell in 2021, wreaking havoc all weekend. A wet qualifying saw Max Verstappen shockingly joined shockingly joined on the front row by the Williams of George Russell. Yeah, I remember that. I also remember Landonor shunting off at the top of a rouge. 
That was not fun to watch as, as a London Norris fan. Let me tell you that. I was definitely not crying. I really wasn't crying. I was just praying that he was okay. And thanks to Sebastian Vettel, we saw that he was okay. So, yeah. Conditions, conditions worsened overnight, forcing a three-hour race delay. And when the cars did get out on track, they just did two laps around safety car before returning to the pit lane. The race technically wasn't cancelled. It might as well have been, as a lap had been completed, with half points awarded to the top 10. That means it holds the record for the shortest F1 race in terms of both distance and numbers, number of laps. I think this is the last one on the page. Yes, it's the last one. And this one is most recent. Recent cancellation of a race. And that was the 2022 Russian Grand Prix. We all know the reason why. There'll be no more race, no more F1 racing in Russia. In Russia. During its seven years on the calendar, the Russian Grand Prix at so Sochi was never a fan favorite. Facts. So no one was sad to see the back of it last year. Vladimir Putin's continued invasion of neighboring Ukraine cost his country not only the 2022 edition, but also the rest of their contract. I think that's just karma. Yeah. So, um, I see we've got a little more time left on, uh, on here. So I want to go to the Formula One app right now and read more about, read you guys more about the statements uh, that they made. So all news. Your yeah, one app is so confusing with all like the news. <laughs> so. Mm. Oh yeah, and F1 donated 1 million euros to Emilia Romagna's region's agency for ter uh, territorial safety and, ci and civil protection. That's very nice. And all the drivers they sent their support and all. And there was actually footage of Yuki Tsunoda who, uh, who lives, uh, I believe, in that region as well. I'm not, not too sure. Here it is. Ugh. My beautiful atlas. Now, where's Italy in here? That's Middle East. That's Russia. That's Middle East. Turkey. Saudi. Uh, Italy. So. Let's see. Definitely doesn't live in the southern parts. It lives in Faenza. Huh, I can see Imola. Um, where is. Oh, right there. Yeah, it is in northern Italy. So he actually cleaned up. Helped with the cleanup of his hometown, where he lives, and there was there was actual footage of him. So you get to know that you're a hero. Um, but yeah, we're gonna read on uh, the news article now of updates on the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix at Imola, posted the 17th of May 2023 at thir at uh, one sixteen in the afternoon. <coughs> The article starts with the Formula One community wants to send its thoughts to the people and communities affected by the recent events in the Emilia Romagna region. We also want to pay tribute to the work of the emergency services who are doing everything they can to help those in need. Following discussions between Formula One, the president of the FIA, uh, the Compe Competence 
authorities including the relevant ministers, the president of the Automobile Club of Italy, president of the Emilia Romagna region, major of the city and a promoter, the decision has been taken to not proceed with the Grand Prix weekend at Imola. The decision has been taken because it's not possible to safely hold the event for our fans. The team and our person and our personnel and it's the right and responsible thing to do given the situation faced by the towns and cities in the region. They love their long sentences. Holy shit. I did say shit, but it's a word I allow on my channel. In case you guys didn't know. That other word I do not allow. The F word. It would not be right to put further pressure on the local authorities and emergency services at this difficult time. Stefano Dominicali, President and CEO of Formula One said, It is such a tragedy to see what has happened to Imola and Emilia Romagna, the town and region that I grew up in. And my thoughts and prayers are with the victims of the flooding and the families and communities affected. I want to express my gratitude and admiration for the incredible emergency services who are working tired, tirelessly to help those in need and ele <laughs> elevate the situation. They are heroes and the whole of Italy is proud of them. The decision has been taken. The decision that has been taken is the right one for everyone in the local community, local communities and the F1 family, as we need to ensure safety and not create extra burden for the authorities while they deal with this very awful situation. FIA President Mohammed Ben Sulayem said, my thoughts and those of the entire FIA family are with those affected by the terrible situation in the Emilia Romagna region. The safety of everyone involved and recovery efforts are the top priority at this time. So that gives you an idea of why they cancelled uh, cancelled the uh, Grand Prix at Imola. Because they don't want to put more pressure on the emergency services that, that, uh, than they already have. And it's a good thing. Like with these type of situations, you don't only look at, okay, I want to have entertain entertainment. You also look at, but is it possible with what's happening in the region? Is it the right thing? I mean, in the past, they would have they wouldn't have done it, done this. They would just continue racing. But now. The FIA is already under so much pressure that they need to make harsh decisions and whatever way, whatever decision they make, they will get hate for it, which in my opinion is unfair because like, was in your eyes the right opinion? Like, do you not want, do you want to race without rules? Do you want to continue? Do you want to continue racing while people are dying out there because of the terrible flood? No, you don't want that. You want to have everyone be safe. You don't want to have any more victims of a terrible flood. You just want to have safety. Yeah, safety is number one priority. No matter what. Like. Even if it is just at work. Like, one way or another, you are working with dangerous things. And it may not look like it, but cows can be dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> especially when they have a certain feeling that they need to, uh... Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that is dangerous. I don't know uh, if you guys know how heavy cows are, but they are heavy. I have not yet felt it. I am lucky to not have felt it, but it is dangerous. And yeah, you just want safety at all costs. 
And yeah, in my opinion, Formula One, the FIA has taken the right decision. Um, and also, yeah, drivers can relax a little. Because this Grand, this season has like 23 races. And they were going to go for, th uh, for a triple header in Europe. Now it's double header. With next weekend, we have Monaco. One of the three triple crown things. So you guys, I don't know if you know what the triple crown is. But that is Indy 500. 24 hours of Le Mans. And victory at Le Mo uh, at at Monaco, and um, there were talks that Max Verstappen was going to do it, uh, the twenty four hours of Le Mans. Um, I know actually, um, I don't I don't know if it is that you have to have won the Triple Crown. Uh, in that case, Fernando Alonso did have a go at the Double Crown. <laughs> he did the Indy five hundred, or he did NASCAR. In 2019, but yeah, I don't think any now race, still racing F1 driver has um, the triple crown. But if they do, I will make a video about that, about their performances out there. But yeah, I hope you guys understand why the Emilia, uh, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix have been cancelled uh, to be honest all the time they've been there it has been raining so I think they need to put it to a different time to a different periods maybe like near the end of the season or maybe just in summer because you know summer in Italy yeah or they need to have it as a season opener when it's still considered for winter I don't know what do you guys think uh, and if you live um, in Italy um, like near the region of Imola let me know what is like the best time for the uh, for uh, a dry you know what when it's like a dry period and also if you live anywhere in the Emilia Romagna region or northern Italy my thoughts are with you guys. I hope you guys get all through this. And yeah. Stay safe. But that's it. From me for now. And I shall see you guys in another video. Bye.